In this lecture, we are going to look at the networking issues in IoT. In the previous lectures, we looked at the connectivity issues that means with respect to communication, what are the challenges that are there, what are the solutions that are available, the IEEE 802.15.4 standard and the different protocols which follow those standards. We looked at in uh, significant detail. In this particular lecture, we will sort of conceptually continue with whatever we were discussing, but from a networking point of view, we will look at the different other aspects of uh, setting up IoT systems and uh, from a network point of view, what are the solutions again that are there in order to address. So, um, let us first look at, let us first look at some of the characteristics of IoT devices, but before that let us quickly recap the typical network that is encountered in IoT systems. So, the typical network that is encountered is that we have a source a data source or multiple data sources consisting of sensors typically sensors, RFIDs and so on, which collect, which interact with the physical environment, collect the data and then the data is sent elsewhere for further processing typically and then based on the processing, based on what is determined by the data that is analyzed. So, the, the uh, the uh, some some system would be uh, you know actuated it may may or may not be actuated you know some system may be actuated or there may not be any actuation associated with the system at all so we have seen both of these types in the previous lectures so let us with this kind of backdrop let us try to understand that what are the challenges ahead if we need to build up this kind of system from the connectivity point of view we have already seen but from a network point of view how to set up the network let us try to understand this. So, going back these are the characteristics of IoT devices. The IoT devices typically would consist of different sensors etcetera typically but not necessarily. So, irrespective of what they con contain um, these IoT devices will have very low very low processing power they are very small in size and they have energy constraints because they are typically battery operated and because of the small size in uh, you know because of their small size the batteries that are used are also small and due to the electrochemical limitation of the batteries. So, what happens is these batteries will have a very limited lifetime. So, what you need to have is to have solutions at the hardware and the software and the algorithmic level which will consume very, very low power. So, from a network point of view specifically, we need systems, we need protocols, we need solutions, we need algorithms which will be consuming extremely low energy. So, we have in each of these IoT devices in the network, in the IoT network which are energy constrained, they are small in size and have very limited processing power. So, network protocols that are designed for use in IoT should be designed accordingly keeping these constraints in mind. So, from a network that is from the device point of view, from a network point of view these networks typically support very low throughput, they have high packet loss, they have very high packet loss because these networks typically operate in environments which are very much noisy there are a lot of interferences consequently the packet loss is also high and they have tiny useful payload size and in most cases these networks also exhibit the behavior of frequent changes 
in their topology. So, as you can understand it is a highly constrained dynamic kind of scenario and coming up with networking solutions is a huge challenge in these uh, in these systems. So, classical internet that the one that is based on TCP IP the classical internet that we all use is not meant for these constrained IoT devices. So, from a holistic viewpoint the challenges can be classified into different types. We have challenges with respect to access, there is heterogeneous access, heterogeneous, heterogeneous traffic flowing through these networks, there is heterogeneity in the devices, in the vendors, in the specifications, in the standards, in the protocols that are used by these devices and the devices working in these networks. And as I said before, the devices are constrained in all respects, energy, processing, communication and so on. So, in all respects these are constrained. So, you have heterogeneous access, heterogeneous traffic flowing through these networks and heterogeneous devices and constrained devices. All of these holistically from a network point of view make the designing of these systems very challenging. To think about IoT, let us think about, let us you know think about a tree. So, this analogy has been taken from the source that is given on the slide. So, let us think about the tree. We in a tree we have the roots, in a tree we have the trunk of the tree and then we have leaves. So, the different IoT applications like smart healthcare, smart transportation, smart cities, smart energy, smart retail, smart home, smart cities overall. All these smart smart things that we talk about in the context of IoT, these smart applications they are analogous to the leaves of a tree. At the very bottom of the tree are these roots. These roots are like communication protocols and device technologies, communication device technologies. So, these protocols and device technologies are sort of like the roots of the tree. Technologies such as Bluetooth, Zigbee, Z wave, uh, wireless heart, Wi Fi, sensors, actuators, these are the different roots of the tree. So, considering the IoT applications on the very top and the roots like the ones the technologies this protocols that I just mentioned. The objective is to come up with a suitable trunk that will support these applications and will connect with the roots of the tree. So, this is this trunk is basically the architectural reference model of IoT, the ARM model of IoT. So, overall from a optimization kind of viewpoint the goal can be stated like this that we need to select a minimum set of roots and propose a potential trunk that enables the creation of maximum set of leaves. So, this can be thought of like the overall objective, the optimization objective in this particular context. Now, think about IoT. IoT we can think about offering non IP based proprietary, proprietary means like vendor specific solutions or we can think of using the IP based solutions based on the IETF protocols that are already there. So, we can have the classical internet that everybody uses be used, be adopted for supporting IoT networks. So, we have proprietary non IP based solutions and these use vendor specific gateways, vendor specific solutions of all kinds including the APIs. On the contrary, we have IETF IP based solutions where there are different different initiatives to support IoT like the 6 low pan which talks about IPv6 over low pan which is low, low power wireless personal area network and this is the one that we discussed in the context of connectivity in the previous lecture. So, IPv6 over 6 low pan is one such uh, technology, one such protocol, one such protocol which is being worked upon 
by a specific six low pan working group. Likewise, there are other working groups talking about the adaptation of IoT requirements to the internet. So, so that you know you, you can use the existing internet to support IoT applications. So, among these are role, role is basically routing over low power lossy networks role and then you have the core which is constraint restful environments. Three different working groups are there like this there are multiple different initiatives in order to have support of I, uh, IOT over, uh, over IP that means the existing internet. That means we are talking about exist you know coming up with solutions of adapt adaptation for use of IOT in existing IP based systems, IP based networks. So, going back we have proprietary non IP based solutions. So, for example, we could be talking about the use of different different sensor networks. So, where different sensor networks, different sensor systems could be using proprietary proprietary solutions, proprietary protocol stack right. So, this is this part and then we have on the other side you have different devices such as laptops, desktops you know then these PDAs and many others which typically in the existing framework use the existing TCP IP protocol stack of the internet. So, now what we need to do? We need to come up with a solution which can fit these proprietary solutions to the existing framework of the internet which is which is already supporting laptops, PDAs and different other wireless devices. So, this is this holistic framework that we are talking about over here. But the drawback of these non IP based solutions are that there is limited flexibility to end users. And so, because these are vendor specific APIs there is limited flexibility that the end users have. In terms of interoperability there are vendor specific sensors, vendor specific, specific gateways each of these pick different languages you know it is somewhat like some sensor nodes, some IoT devices pick one specific vendor specific language. Let us say that somebody speaks you know analogously uh, that somebody speaks English, somebody speaks French, somebody speaks Hindi, how they can talk to each other. There is no common language, there is no uh, you know there is no um, interoperability between them. So, you need to you need to in order to conquer this kind of heterogeneity you need to have a common framework which will which will make these disparate devices following different proprietary standards talk to each other. So, interoperability is this issue which talks about conquering this challenge of heterogeneity in all different respects. The last one is that limited lifetime uh, sorry last, li uh, last mile connectivity uh, the, you know most of these IP, uh, non IP based solutions offer limited last mile connectivity because you know these are not typically these are not models which uh, are supposed to scale up unlike the IP ones which uh, you know IP has been designed in such a way. So, that the scalability can be uh, maintained that means, that it is a, it's a IP is a scalable solution unlike these proprietary vendor specific solutions which are non scalable not non scalable, but limitedly scalable. So, we have different IP based solutions as well typically following different initiatives by IETF, 6 low pan, role and core are three different important ones which I mentioned already. IPv6 talks about how you can do header compression, encapsulation, how you can harness these in order to allow the IPv6 packets from the network layer to be transmitted over IEEE 802.15.4 based networks. And this we have seen in considerable detail in the previous lecture. Role is about how you can optimize the routing protocol etcetera for saving on storage and energy. So, role is a new kind of routing protocol that can be used that can be used for IoT based applications. And core constraint restful environment extends the integration of IoT devices 
from networks to the service level and this is what is very essential you know it is a important thing service level you know typically we talk about the networks we talk about collecting data from these networks in the context of IOT it is even more significant. So, here we are talking about services IOT is mostly if not completely about offering different services. So, this service consideration in core is very crucial and is of uh, you know is an attraction in the in the IOT community. So, before we get into the further details of core, I would like to talk about a very fundamental concept. So, that we ensure that we really understand what we are talking about. So, let us say that if we consider an IOT network, this is how it is going to look like. So, we will have we have different IOT devices which are the things which are the things and these things could be you know sensor enabled you know sensor based let us say that these are IOT based right. So, IOT based things uh, sensor enabled these data that are collected from this the things which are fitted with different sensors, these will then transmit that collected data through something like a local area network, then send that data further through the internet to the back end. And this back end will would have all kinds of processors like servers, then you will have storage devices including cloud etcetera etcetera in the present context. In the modern context we talk a lot about using cloud based services for processing storage etcetera. So, that back end could be cloud based. So, this is this network and the corresponding protocols architecture and other aspects of solutions that we need to understand in considerable detail. So, here in this lecture we are simply introducing you about the overall concept or uh, the networking aspects, uh, but you know gradually down the lane throughout the course we will talk about many of these things in further more detail and their applications in the real context. So, we will we were talking about core right. So, we saw that there are different IETF initiatives on supporting IOT over existing internet and um, let us talk about the core which is the full form of which is constrained restful environments constrained restful environment. So, as you can see over here you know REST 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 is a, an acronym you know. So, we are talking about the architecture which supports REST and we need to see how that helps in building up core. So, core basically provides a platform for applications meant for constraint IOT devices and that is what this, this constraint part is important and that is where this use of core for IOT comes into picture and that is where this find, find, finds itself useful for IOT uh, environments. So, this framework views sensors and actuator resources as web resources. The framework is limited to applications which monitor basic sensors and supervise the actuators. So, COPE includes a mechanism for service discovery and it is this service discovery that makes it very interesting. So, let us look at the service discovery aspect of core. Core devices are like mini web servers that register their resources to the resource dire directory and the registration interface. So, a re resource directory is a logical network node 
that stores the information about a specific set of IoT devices. So, it is basically about storage, a logical IoT node storing the information about a set of IoT devices. The registration interface on the other hand supports the REST based protocol, the REST architecture, the full form of which is representational state transfer architecture, which would you know support protocols such as HTTP for the existing internet and for IoT the equivalent of it which is the COP which again we will talk about in uh, a little bit uh, further detail in, uh, in a short while. So, IoT client uses the lookup interface for discovery of IoT devices. Now, everything is fine, network has been built, but then whether the network is able to offer the quality of service guarantees or at least some acceptable levels of quality of service. And that is what is also very important because IoT networks are all centered on services. So, let us try to understand what are these quality of service issues. So, quality of service of IoT network talks about guarantees, guarantees with respect to offering different services to the, the IoT applications through controlling the heterogeneous traffic generated by IoT devices. QoS policies for IoT networks include resource utilization, data timeliness, data availability and data delivery. These are the four different attributes which are of prime consideration in the context of QoS and using uh, and ensuring QoS for IoT networks. So, let us look at each of these four things in further detail. Resource utilization is the first among the four. It talks about you know the, the concept the requirement of the concept of control on the storage, control on the storage and bandwidth for data reception and transmission. We are talking about resources. Resources in the context of networks mean different things such as storage, bandwidth, etcetera. The control over these resources such as storage, bandwidth, etcetera for reception and transmission is something that has to be considered as a QoS criterion and this is quite fundamental. QoS policies for resource utilization include re resource limit policy which controls the amount of message buffering and this is useful for memory constraint IoT devices. And the second one the QoS policy for re resource utilization is time filter policy which controls the data sampling rate and this basically talks about the inter arrival time to avoid buffer overflow. So, this, this talks about control over the network bandwidth, memory and processing power. Timeliness the second attribute is, uh, uh, is basically the measurement of the freshness of a particular information when it is received at the receiver end. So, from the source till the receiver the data that is sensed is sent at the receiver it is received, but then when it is received at the receiver how much fresh that data is. And this is a very important consideration particularly for applications where safety criticality, where there is real time requirements are there for example, healthcare, the patient having heart attack for example, it, it, it is a very important QoS criterion to, 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 to measure whether the data that is received at the receiver end may be somebody having a heart attack, the packet containing that information, whether that is fresh enough, whether the data has been received timely or not. So, this is a very important uh, consideration in many of these applications. Then data timeliness policies for IoT networks include the deadline policy. That means, the maximum inter arrival time of data how much is the maximum inter arrival time and pro provisioning for it these are this is a very important policy consideration. The second policy consideration is the latent uh, latency budget policy consideration which is the maximum time difference between the data transmission and reception from source end to the receiver end. So, uh, so these are the two uh, different uh, considerations for uh, data timeliness. The next attribute is the data availability. And availability as this name suggests, it is the me measurement of the amount of valid data provided by the, send, uh, by the sender or the producer to the receiver or the consumer. QoS policies for data availability in IoT networks include durability policy, 
lifespan policy and history policy. Durability as this English term suggests, it talks about the control of the degree of data persistence transmitted by the sender. So, data persistence is important that means ensuring the availability of the data to the receiver even after the sender is unavailable. So, the persistence of the data at the receiver is a very important durability policy consideration. Lifespan policy talks about the control over the duration for which the transmitted data will remain valid, how much the data that has been sensed and is being circulated through the network, how much time it is going to survive, how much time it is going to live. So, this is a lifespan policy, this is the lifespan policy. History policy is about controlling the number of previous data instances available to the data. So, in the history of the data, how many uh, such instances are available to the receiver. So, um, data delivery is the last one. It measures, uh, it is about the measurement of successful reception of reliable data from the sender to the receiver. QoS, QoS policies for data delivery uh, are basically the reliability policy, which is about, which talks, which talks about the control uh, uh, of the reliability level associated with the data distribution and the transport priority which allows transmission of data according to its priority level. So, with this we come to an end of the first part of IoT uh, networks. We will continue with the different other aspects of uh, networking in IoT and um, uh, before, uh, 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 before, uh, before uh, you know uh, we uh, talk about uh, those uh, things in detail. Uh, there are few other issues that also need to be considered and that is what we are going to talk about in the next lecture. Thank you.